One of the biggest misconceptions in the industry surrounds the way that a speaker enclosure factors into the overall performance of a stereo system. Its alignment is typically positioned as the be-all and all solution for achieving a desired sound, and while that's not entirely untrue, its function also isn't quite as autonomous or self-governed as you may expect. Let's start simple. Even a driver suspended in a sealed volume of air will exhibit some variation in sensitivity and impedance as we alter the shape of the container or even the mounting position of the driver. Think of it as the capacitive reactance of a fluid confined to a three-dimensional shape. At any given frequency, different regions within that shape will be subject to different levels of pressure, and these variations only intensify as we raise the system order with additional passive components like waveguides and radiators comprising our inductive elements, and chambers comprising our capacitive elements, each contributing to the overall system reactance profile. A profile which ultimately defines not just the network of waveguides and chambers inside the enclosure, but everything between the cone and the listener's ear. Your trunk, for instance, is basically a high-order aperiodic cavity coupled in series with a physical Wolfer cabinet. Aside from various inductive losses stemming from panel compliance higher than that of wood, its behavior is no different than that of any active or passive chamber within the enclosure. Its geometry still defines the distribution of pressure, resonance, and acoustic impedance, and these figures still change with frequency and the orientation of the sound source. Further onward, the segmented passage between the trunk and the main cabin can be defined as an array of inductive radiators, and the cabin itself as another aperiodic cavity in series with the trunk. Simply put, if an acoustic model is to accurately predict the results at the end of a signal path, it has to account for everything along that route, not just the first couple of reactive elements represented by what's inside the enclosure. In that regard, the enclosure is merely an adjustable segment at the low end of a high-order bandpass network. And while it does serve as a control point in an otherwise static chain, it is no more central to it than any other link. Just like the alignment of the rear chamber of a fourth order bandpass would still have to comply with the nature of an already existing front chamber, vents, and whatever else the sound passes through on its way to the listener. That being said, the drawbacks of any design philosophy with the operating environment as a cursory factor, if a factor at all, become evident. Especially in cases where a generic on-the-fly enclosure recommendation is presented as a mere volume of space and tuning, often with no prior knowledge as to where it's going. Right away, even without coupling the enclosure's output to the vehicle model, one look at the response trace plotted against the driver's excursion profile will reveal that there is no definitive correlation between tuning frequency and response, to say nothing of the likelihood that a bass reflex might even emerge as the optimal design style. So, getting back to the question at hand, is an enclosure the be-all, end-all solution for achieving a desired sound? It's certainly a small part of it.